Okay, first thing we want to do on this one, it's interpreting graphs and trying to be able to read these graphs. It says, Kara's been charting the growth of her son as shown below. What they want you to do first is go in here and fill in the height. So at zero, when the baby is born, right there, it is 21 inches long. At three months, let me move my thing down here a little bit. There we go. At three months, you go right here and they're up at, what is that, 25? At 12 months, you come up here. And it is thir and he is 32 inches. And then at 24 months, you come up, and we're at 36 inches. Okay? Now, I'd like you to look right here, and I want you to label X and Y. Okay? I want you to remember that domain, I want you to circle domain, and I want you to put an X right there. So on the X axis... It says age. So if you look at your answer choices, A and C both say height. Those are not the right answers. Now B and D, which one of them is right there? Starting here, we start at zero. Well, both of them start to zero. Well, where does my data end at? At 24, so your answer is D. On the next one, it says, which, is the f which of the following is the correct range? Circle range, and let's put Y above it. The range is the Y. So if I go up here and I look at my range, where does my data start at? Not at zero. That's, that's what I want to make sure everybody gets correct here. We, where does the data start? The data starts right here at 21. And what, so if I look at my answer choices, starting at 21, these two start at 21. What if I, why would G not be the right answer? Right, the data ends at 36 right here. So your, your um, range is going to be from 21 to 36. Now, it says how much did he grow in the first three months? Let's look up at the table. How much did he grow right here in the first three months? Four. Take 25 minus 1, or 25 minus 21, and that's 4. So he grew 4 inches. Okay. What about in the second year of life from 12 to 24? How do you get from 32 to 36 plus 4? In which section did he grow faster, 0 to 3 or 12 to 24? He grew the same, but what if I said, what about the rate of the growth? Why would it be 0 to 3? The line is steeper. It's a shorter amount of time, right, that they grew the same amount. See, and the steeper the line means the faster it's going. So right here, let's see, that was four inches. And it said, in which months did he grow most rapidly? And this is where we're going to say from zero to three months. Oops, funky M. Let's try that again. And how did you know that? It's because the line was steeper. We could say that. The line was, was steeper. Or you could just say that he grew, you know, four inches in a shorter amount of time. Now, right here it says, what is the independent quantity? <clears throat> Let's underline independent, though, and put X. And, yes, it's the same as it's the age. It's the same as the domain. The dependent, dependent is the Y, which is the height, and it's the same as the range. Let's look at this next problem.
Number um, eight says, during which stage or stages of the flight was the altitude increasing? Remember, altitude is another word for height. So during which stages was it increasing? What's happening? Well, actually, let's go back and read what the problem is saying. It says that a bird is sitting in a tree and flies away, then returns to his tree. His altitude over time is graphed. Let me ask. This is not starting at zero. What, what's going on? What does this mean? He started in a tree. How tall was the tree? Or how tall, how far up in the tree from the ground was he? Ten feet. So what did the bird first do? He started on the tree. He flew up in the sky. What's happening here? He could have stopped in a tree. Could have slept. Ah, uh, couldn't he be gliding? Right? Can't you be? Because he's at the same height for that amount of time, right? The time's just going. So he's still at the same altitude. He's just gliding, gliding, gliding. Then what did he do? Went up higher. He went down. Did he go all the way to the ground? He went back to the tree. Okay, so at what points, which um, sections was he going up? One and three. During which stages of his flight was he decreasing? Yeah, four, because you're going down. Now, well, but are we telling it, the thing was line steepness? The line steepness just shows you how fast it's going, right? How did you tell if the line was increasing? Yeah, if it's increasing, the line was going up. And if it was decreasing, the line was going down. Okay. And then we kind of talked about it, but what's happening in stage two? Stage two is right here. He's Regardless if he's on a tree or gliding, he's staying at the same height, right? So I would write here he's staying at the same height. He could be in a tree again, or he could be gliding. Now, the next two questions ask us about domain and range. Circle domain, what letter is the domain? X. So let's look at the domain. Here is X. Here is Y. So it is the time in minutes. So one way you could write domain, if it asked you what the domain was in words, it was the time in minutes. Maybe that'll be an answer choice. Or what about the numbers? Where do I start at? Start at zero, and I go, the data goes all the way out to what? To seven minutes. So we're going to write from... Zero to seven minutes. Now, what about the range? The range is the Y. Be careful where you're starting right there at the range. Where does the range start at? At 10, because that's where it started in the tree. So with the range... If we look here what we're starting with, we're going to start here at 10 where the bird's at, and we're going to go all the way. The data goes all the way up here to 100. So we've got, first off, it's altitude in feet. So the range is altitude. And we could write from 10 to 100 
feet. During which stage is the change in the altitude most rapid? So if we want to know if it's most rapid, we want to know which is the steepest. So if I look up here, which line is the steepest? In this one, I go from 10 to 70. So that's so in stage one, I go up 60 and over in two minutes, which is 30. Stage two, it's staying the same. I'm not going fast there. What about stage three? Well, I'm going up from 70 to 100, so I'm going up 30 and over one minute. So that's 30. They're the same. Let's see about 4. 4, I'm at 100. I'm going all the way down to 10. So that's 90 in 2 minutes, which is 45. So even though the line is decreasing, I'm still go doing it quickly. So it would be stage 4. Whoops. Next, this is a car speed over a 10-minute period is shown. Okay, first off, let's, let's label, well, let's see if I can move this over on this thing a little bit. There we go. Let's label X, then Y. Well, it says the graph above re, um, represents a relationship between velocity and the, time, and the time of a car leaving school parking lot. What is the domain of the function? Remember, domain is the x. Well, what's here on the x? It is time. Now, the first two say velocity. Nope, that's not it. So it's either from 0 to 10 or 0 to 1. Well, let's see what's happening. I'm starting at 0, and the data is going all the way out here to 10. So the answer should be that, 10. Now it says, what is the independent quantity of the situation? Independent is the x. That's time. So the answer is time. What is the dependent quantity? Dependent is the y. If I go up here, it's velocity. Choose the graph below to best represents each situation. Oh, gee, this is kind of hard to, let's see if I can make it so we can see it. There we go. Move them all up into the area. Okay, if you're at home watching it, pause it and then come back and see if you got it right. The first thing says a person alternates between running and walking. So that means that they're going to be they're going to be running and walking their speed is going to increase and decrease and increase and decrease. So I think it might be B. Let's look at the other ones. A person gradually speeds up and is running at a constant speed at a constant pace. So I'm going to speed up and then I'm going to go at a constant pace, meaning it'll go about the same speed. So I think that's A. A person walks, gradually speeds up to a run, and then slows back down to a walk. That would be C. Let's see, did I get all that? Yep. Here's the next one. Okay, so let's start here on number one. Kelly receives a $25 gift card from Blockbuster for her birthday. Each movie that she rents is, costs $3.75. Which equation best represents the amount A left on Kelly's gift card after renting a certain number of movies? Okay, well, what do you start with? You're starting with the $25 gift card. Every time you rent it, you're subtracting off $3.75 per movie. See, you've got to multiply this, the 375, per each movie. So this is what is left on the gift card. So let's find this. There's got to be one. There it is. 
C is not correct because if you go through here, you're telling me that the gift card has negative $25. See, it has to have a positive amount of money, and then you subtract off $375 each time you rent a movie. Here are the next ones. Well, let's see if I can get this down here. Let's solve these equations and make sure you show all your steps. Right here, I'm going to draw my dotted line. First thing I'm going to do is you do addition and subtraction. So I'm going to add 2 to each side. These cancel. I get 6x equals negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. I'm going to divide by 6. X equals now. This, let's go over here. Let's grab the calculator real quick. If you go in there, uh-oh, I didn't mean to make it that big. Try again. Okay, so I'm going to put in there negative 2, divide by 6, and press enter. It gives me a decimal, but what it's telling me is leave my non-integer answers as fractions. Integers are whole numbers. So I'm going to press math, enter, enter. And my answer is negative one-third. Maybe you need to make note on your paper that integers mean whole numbers. On the next one, I'm going to draw my line. The first thing I'm going to do is addition and subtraction. So I'm going to add one to each side. I get 9 equals negative 3x, because this cancels. Divide by negative 3. I get negative 3 equals x, or I can write it as x equals negative 3. I guess I should have boxed my answer in over here, too. There we go. The next one on number 4. I need to take and divide by what's with the x. So I'm going to divide by negative 20. And I get negative 10 divided by negative 20. So if I go in here, I put, whoa, let me pull this over here. Negative 10 divided by negative 20. Enter. Oh, it gave me a decimal, so let's go math. Oh, where'd it go? There we go. Math, enter, enter. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I hit a button. Let's try this all over again. So I'm going to do negative 10 divided by negative 20, enter. Math, enter, enter. So I'm going to get 1 half equals x, or you write it as x equals 1 half. The next one, a house cleaning service charges $25 per hour plus an additional $10 service fee. What would be the independent quantity? Independent is your x. It's the thing that has, has to happen first. Well, let's write the equation. I've got $25 per hour plus $10. This is the total cost. Out of this right here, what is the independent? It's going to be the number of hours.